Can we make rocks a little less boring? Maybe. Painting rock and stone can be as simple as black and white. But what if we add a whole host of colors to it? Would it still look like stone? I'm going to answer that question for myself, as in this video, I'm tackling something I need to practice. Underpainting. For the model, I'll be using a frog mage from One Page Rules. He's got lots of stonework with a lot of edge that could in theory be as simple as a dry brush. But I'm not taking the easy road today. If I was to paint the whole stone palaquin a gray, then shade it black and highlight it white, I'm sure it'd look fine but it'd be a whole huge block of a single color, and having huge blocks of single colors is a habit I need to get myself out of. For that reason, I figure today I experiment and bring you along for the ride. Now sometimes with these videos I print two of the models, just in case I get a bad print, at least one might be good. But usually I'll practice on the worst one, not this time. This is a heck it, we'll do it live moment. That said, it doesn't mean I don't go in without a plan. I'm gonna work on an underpainting. So what you saw at the start there was me mixing up a black and white to make a neutral gray, something I can use to desaturate all the other colors on the palette. Once I had my gray, I'm going one by one through the other colors, adding them to the gray and painting them in blotches all over the stone. As I go through the colors, it's going to start to look like a pastel tie-dye mess, but I assure you there's a reason for this. I'm not quite sure how it'll turn out, but so far so interesting, right? I forgot to record the orange, so we're at the green here. I deliberately picked out a kind of earthy green. The point of these colors is to mimic natural hues of rocks along with the nature you find on them, which is the point of this final green. I make it a bit more saturated than the others, because this might be something like a moss or a lichen, and I use it to fill the gaps missed with any of the other colors. Sometimes also putting a little extra patches down here and there, where I think the other colors are a bit thin. It looks a bit weird, but you can't say it's boring so far. I do want to get some things shaded now, and while my instinct was to loaded brush some black into each of the colors individually, that's a lot of stone to do that over at the moment. So instead I figured a controlled wash could work, especially since this is really just the undercoat still. I mix up some medium and the gray and add a lot of the black. Reason being is I don't want a pure black, I always go a little lighter than a pure black, otherwise it feels it becomes too desaturated overall. This way we're still going to get those colors peeking out. I wash over the whole area of what I'm going to be washing with just some water, then dipping just the tip of my brush into the paint, start in the part I want darkest, and draw the point out into the other wet parts, then back in towards my dark area. This way, some recesses will still be lighter than even the darkest recesses, while a normal wash would darken them all mostly the same. In the end, it will dry a bit patchy, but I think that's fine since most of the hard work is going to happen with the outlining. Now when I say hard work, I mean hard work. Taking the neutral gray with just a little bit more white mixed in, I'm going to outline everything. Both sides of every plate on the stonework. This will be a long task for the whole model, though we don't need to be too particular about getting it perfectly even since there's more to do with this color after. This is just to set up the effect for later. It helps, apparently, if you break off the part of the model you were working on. Not on purpose, mind you. Though this will help, as now I can just show using this part. So goodbye frog mage for now. For smaller stoneworks like these ones at the very bottom, trying to get every edge, you might as well just paint the whole thing. So instead, just do the top edge that's facing towards the sky. Later when I got to the rest of the frog off camera, I found a nice tip. To do these square runes, instead of trying to do one rune at a time, hold the model in at one angle, get all the sides in an area from that angle, then turn it and do it again. That's why you're turning the model only four times instead of like 12. If you're wondering how long it took me in the end to get all the outlining done, it was actually only around 45 minutes. After the ornate part of the throne, which while I was doing it felt like it all might take forever, the base around the frog mage was actually quite quick and simple because it was square. Now this looks pretty good so far as it is, so after all that work I'd not blame you if you want to leave it as is and go on to other parts. I think people would still be impressed, however we can refine this further. Now it's time to roughen the edges. Stone isn't pristine, it's rough and coarse and gets everywhere. Wait. 
Sorry, wrong script. But the point is, I don't want my rocks looking like glass. So to refine it, we've got to add some texture. To start, I'm going to pick some highlight points, maybe a line that runs down across this tablet. Once I block those in a bit, I start to go further and further out until I'm adding scratches and jitter to every edge I did in the last step. There's a few ways this works. What I'm doing is adding random scratches first, whisking the brush past the flat surface with just the tip of the brush so that it contacts, paints, and lifts in one fluid motion. Then I make random marks along the edges following the edge highlights I did in the last stage. If you're having trouble making things look random, if you tense your arm or fingers a bit, it should add a natural jitter to your hand. As long as you got the brush held near the model, it should add something somewhere in the vicinity you want it. But it is alright to get messy at this stage. We don't want it perfect. Going back to our work once dry, I block in some of the highlight areas completely with the neutral grey. I'm doing this because the texture all over is too uniform. I want to break it up by going lighter in restricted areas, so I paint them in, and then add more white to my mix, and start doing the same thing I just did, outlining, then texturing the edges with scratches here and there. Next verse, same as the first. Pick smaller areas now, and only the upper edges of the highlight points. Fill in with our last gray, then edge and texture, using a paint that's almost fully white, but not quite fully white. To answer the question why I don't go fully white on the last step is because I needed to save it for the corners. Sometimes when you want a lot of contrast on a model, the simplest way to get it is to just give every sharp corner a point of white highlight. In my case, I'm doing the corners plus, so a bit more than just a point, but I'm doing it on most sharp edges, not just the ones we made the brightest. I want to refine it just a tiny bit more, reclaim some of the shadows from where I made it too bright but with some color in there instead of just black. So I took some of my red oxide and the earthy green mixed and put them in my airbrush with some thinner and medium, spraying just thin layers over the dark undersides. Of course, this is possible with a brush. Just thin paint down quite a bit with some medium until it's transparent, and then instead of washing, brush it over the surface you want to change the color of. I'll give you a quick rundown of how I do that on the horns in a little bit. So that's it. For this video, I wanted to focus on the stonework of this model instead of the frog, because for me personally, I tend to let things like this fall wayside to more fun colors like the golds and the frog skin, which I'll be doing blue and orange like my other lizard men. But with a little work and creative color, you can really make boring grey stone into a showcase of its own. Because we have a little time, as a bonus, I'll give you a quick rundown of how I'm going to do the horns, starting with a base coat of basic bone color. If you're used to GW, this would probably be a new Shabti bone. Now for these, I'm going to be going from a light interior to dark out at the tips. So when I do this highlighting, I'm doing it more for the thick base of the horns than I am the tips. Using a thicker brush and an off-white lighter than the bone, I paint lines along the base and midsections of the horns, adding texture and light to the mostly flat surface. Then with a bit thinner brush, do the same with thinner lines, in almost a pure white. I mix a tiny bit of the off-white in there so I don't get a pure white. To shade them down to black, we're going to need to do a whole lot of coats and a whole lot of colors. I'll use Lamia medium for this because I think more people will have it, but any medium should work. You want to mix it with some water and the next color of paint, in this case orange, with a bit of the bone. Just a bit though. We want the pigment thin, then use a paper towel to wick off most of it, leaving the brush just damp. From inside out, pull the brush along the horn out to the tip so that the pigment pools on the tip. For each color, we want to do a few layers of this, mixing in a bit of the last color used into the new color as well. Now if it goes on too thick, you might end up with some pooling. You just want to be careful not to rip it up if it starts drying like I did here. Wait between each layer. And with this model particularly, maybe hold it upside down as it dries. By the time I got to the brown, I did about three layers, just more area along the horn each time. That way, the tip had more layers than further down, but blended between the colors better with those extra thin layers towards the base of the horns. When it came time for the black, I mixed some of that in with the brown and did two layers, one on the tips, then a second a bit further down the horn than that. Lastly, added more black and did just the tips. Now it looks like a nice gradient, but we're not quite done. I've lost a little of the texture with all these layers, so I'm going to bring some back with some additional lining. 
Using just the off-white we used before, I'm going to retrace some of the lines to the best of my accuracy, but not worry too much if I need to make some new ones. Also, for a bit more effect along a single line, usually where you think light might reflect, I'll extend the line up further along towards the tip and make little stippling dots to fade it off. This gives it an edge of reflectivity. So that's it for everything I wanted to show this time. I think out of all the types of things you find over the Lizardmen, the stone and the horns are unique to this model. So the frog you'd just paint like the rest of your scaled ones. I painted the rest off camera for that reason. This one was an experiment for me. I wasn't sure how the stonework might turn out once I started, but I'm really quite happy with it. I keep coming back to look at it just to make sure I like it enough that I don't want to change anything, and so far I haven't felt the need to take a brush to it again. The horns I would have personally layered with my airbrush, but I know not everyone has one, so wanted to show that it's possible without as well. I love painting in new ways and trying new things when it comes to models. That's why I started this channel in the first place, so I could set myself some challenges and learn some new techniques. So thanks for coming with me on this journey, and maybe consider subscribing if you want to come on other painting journeys with me. Until next time.